Forge the Narrative. Hey guys, better late than never. This is a very special episode of Forge Narrative. I've got Horton Doughton. What's up? Now, we're recording, thanks, Horton, thanks a lot. We're recording on a Saturday morning just after the news hit of this new edition of 40K on the horizon. Yeah, it's uh, pretty unbelievable. And you were able to snag me while I was reading this news. <laughs> I was traveling this week, so that's why our, our main crew is not uh, not with us. And this is Saturday morning, and they're not up yet because it's still, it's still pretty early when this hit. Oh, I've been up for an hour and a half just refreshing the page. You know, just being ready. So uh, I was perfect. Perfect guy to call. Okay. So we got a, a blurb on the Facebook about the War on the for leading us to the Warhammer community page. The Warhammer community page also tells us about a new Warhammer 40,000 website. It is uh, warhammer40,000.com. 40,000, the full numbers, not the words. So Warhammer four zeros and then dot com. And we can only expect there's going to be new stuff there. Oh, yeah. I expect a lot of things to be posted there. Very happy to see that site. And then there was an FAQ, you know, that our that our community loves so much about what we can expect from the new edition. Yes, I'm so happy they put that out just because there has been so much speculation and talk and rumor. And GW basically addresses so many of the rumors that have been floating around for months. Uh, I'm just I can't I'm blown away that they did it. I think it's great. And I'm so happy that it's here. Uh, what I like about the the initial teaser here is that it it mentions everything that's been going on Warhammer 40k campaign wise. It goes all the way back to the ball system uh, with the Damocles Gulf and then Fenris and then lean us up to now and then with uh, Rabute coming back. I mean this they're they're tying it all together and moving the story forward. Yes, and that is a great thing. You know we've seen slow story advancement since they've started the campaign book model uh, about two years ago, and I just so happy for that train to keep on rolling. And right there, they have put out a teaser video also. It's on their YouTube channel. So they've. this is a full core press of wanting us to get this info. Oh yeah, great great video too. The video ends with an amalgamation of what seems to be an Imperial Marine. I, I'm going to assume it's some type of Ultra variant and then Death Guard. And you know, you know how I like the Death Guard, Horton. Oh yeah, I, I do. I, I got some as well. I'm kind of upset because I'm going to buy all these new models too. But you know, it's great. <laughs> Yeah, it, it it is great, man. Especially, I mean, you saw the teasers from uh, from the Adepticon links of all oh, yeah. the sweet Death Guard that are coming out. I mean, you know, barring a lot of the aesthetics from the Age of Sigmar line, but it's still ultimately Nurgle, and we love it. That's fine. The Age of Sigmar stuff looks great. I've got some Blood Warriors that I use as Berserkers, and it's fine. Oh, they, they look cool. Those Blight Kings are amazing uh, spawn conversions. They they could easily be uh, kind of mocked up for Demon Prince status. I mean, there's... It's it's an, a fabulous line, so I'm I am not complaining at all. I'm thinking that there's a unifying aesthetic there uh, that that people I think will appreciate. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, well let's just jump, let's just dive right into this uh, FAQ here because it, and we won't read necessarily read everything word for word, but they they come and hit us right in the jaw here with "Is my army still valid?" And it certainly is, according to GW. Uh, just easing any fears, there's not going to be a squat situation. Uh, nobody's getting blown up or eaten by the Tyranids. Everybody we know and love is coming to 8th edition, and that's great. I think that's the important takeaway here is that uh, the, nobody's getting squatted. No one's getting an army removed from the core or whatever. Now, I think we can justifiably and rightly expect that maybe our current builds – will not be the most optimized thing anymore, what we're kind of used to playing right now. Uh, but at least uh, if we are true fans of the faction, it will be available to us. Yeah, they're they're yeah, they're, they're only going to add. They're not going to take away, which is great. And then the next one right there, can I still use all my models? And the answer is yes. Yep, nothing's getting invalidated. Everybody's going to keep their rules in some form. So I'm I'm super pumped about that. I think the important thing here is that it, what it says is every Warhammer 40k miniature we sell today will be usable. So if you're hanging on to you know what what's an example of a of a uh, and maybe an orc pulsar rocket or something you know I I don't think that you can expect that it's going to creep its way back into eighth. Uh, but if you've got a battle wagon or a shock attack gun. Then we can, you know, you're, you're going to see it. Yeah, they, they're redoing things. They aren't cutting things out. 
So it, it's going to exist in some form, no matter what it is. I mean, I heard speculation from some people that they were like, oh, they're going to redo the rules and X and Y special characters won't have rules. And I was like, ah, I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, so the GW is saying, no, guys, it's all going to be there. Don't worry. And, and then it goes on to say that they will be – you're going to have the rules from the get-go. Like they're in low cost – and this is this is their own words – low cost books. Yes. So to me, this all but confirms uh, compilation style books from Age of Sigmar. And some people might think that have a bad connotation, but we're going to talk about why you shouldn't feel that way uh, today. Basically saying, hey, look, you can get these low cost books that have a ton of rules in them at one time. Uh, so I'd love to see that come to 40K. And I think they're basically confirming that. You're probably right. And even if it's just a kind of get us by thing, like with, with Sigmar, I think we can kind of look back and, and at least the function of it, of what it was and what it's become over the last year and a half or so as all the good stuff, how they've refined it, how they've sharpened that that blade down to what we're going to see in 40K. And it's really good uh, because everyone got rules for everything. All the War Scrolls were, were either available, available for purchase, or just available for free in places. And then they started releasing Battle Tomes, which just added to that. Didn't take away anything from anything. It may have replaced some things, but it didn't invalidate anything that didn't get replaced. Correct. Correct. And I think now that they kind of have refined that model, we're going to see it come and do very positive things for 40k um especially like we've people have talked about before you know uh i played a the list i've recently been playing takes five codexes to play i mean if i can buy a book that is all chaos units in one book i will buy that 10 times and give it to people yeah you know because that's gonna be so amazing yeah could be yeah you download go digital you know i mean i'm open to anything i like i like that their emphasis are on low-cost books because i mean on the now we're gushing fanboys right now you know, rightly so, I believe. Uh, but you know, there's a lot of investment that people have in their older books, and to to have to think like you just said. Well, I want to play with these figures right here, and it needs five more. And I need five books for that. Do I have to get five more books? Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But I like their their kind of emphasis here on there. Maybe not going to be fifty dollars books, and we have no insight. This is just pure speculation. Pure speculation for sure. And they do say the same thing for Forge World stuff. Which I think basically – they're basically saying even Forge World models uh, basically tells me – sheds some light on perhaps why we haven't gotten an FAQ from Forge World on 40K stuff in about two years. Um, that they're like, well, why do that when we're going to release this? So it's it all makes sense. Effort. Yeah, and this is – even – the next question is even Forge World models? Yes, even all your Warhammer 40K Forge World models uh, will will be viable – and have supported rules. Which I'm thrilled about because I have a lot of, I have a handful of Forge World stuff that's kind of in a, it was kind of in the in-between edition rules limbo uh, situation. <laughs> so I I'm, can't wait for that stuff to be addressed. Uh, Malkador, Heavy Tank. Uh, Ma- Malkador, some of the old Re- stuff Reaper from, uh, yeah, some of that, yeah, some of those kind of things. <laughs> Forge World, I love playing with Forge World stuff. So uh, to have it, over the years, we've seen it come a lot more common. And I know not every every area does allow Forge World. Um, because really there is kind of like a big gap in their rules. Some of, some of the Forge World stuff is incredibly efficient. I'm not going to use the word cheesy or powerful. I'm just going to say incredibly point efficient for what it does. And then some stuff is incredibly equally as inefficient. Yeah, and, and some of that is the product of, you know, Forge World, the guys who write stuff for Forge World, it's like five or six guys, so they only have so much time and effort. So you might have a unit that really was – these rules were first written like in fourth or fifth edition and now it's still trying to be played in seventh and it just doesn't quite – it doesn't work the way it was designed to work anymore. Uh, and there are just a lot of units kind of in that limbo right now. Um, so – but they all look great, and uh, they that's look great, why I like yeah. seeing them on the table. And that's why we have so many people carrying that torch for this stuff, because it's just awesome-looking toys. Oh, yeah, it is. Next thing here. Wait, did you guys blow up the universe? This is a question in the FAQ. Yes, and it turns out they didn't blow up the universe. Uh, <laughs> I, who'd have thought? Well, in 40K, though, isn't the universe like always blowing up? Yeah, and I think I've heard some other people talk about this, too. You know, stuff's blowing up all the time in 40K. So, I mean, they're not going to blow up the whole galaxy, but they might they blew up some planets, right? You know, and that's fine. That's cool. It happens all the time. It happens every day. I think so. I think what we're going to see is more characters getting active, you know, things that we, we might see confrontations between characters that in the story, maybe they don't come out. They don't come away from it. But I think you'll still find rules for those characters. 
oh yeah, like they just said, you know, is my army still valid? All current rule, if you I, mean, I don't want to give too many spoilers from Gathering Storm in case you haven't read it, but there are certain characters who are no longer functioning in the capacity they were before those books, right? But they're still going to have rules. GW is not like deleting them, and I think you can see that here. They're not blowing anybody up. Nobody's rules are going away. And as, as long as there are Blackstone Fortresses in the universe, uh, there will be some endangered planets. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Uh, seeing the the way that the Gathering Storm wraps up, and again, no spoilers or whatever, but it sets the stage for change. And I'm looking forward to see how that change, of course, filters down into the rules and what's exciting to play. I mean, I'll be real with you, man. You know, I love Blood Angels, and I love them because of the stories. I don't, I didn't even like Red when I first started the army. I had a Samhain Force and a Blood Angel Force, with Red being one of my least favorite colors at the time. Wait, that speaks to how much you like the Blood Angels. Yeah, just because sure. of the stories. So as these things change, I'm I'm looking forward to what I'm going to be excited about playing next. Oh yeah, I mean, we're I think that, that I think it's going to be great. Uh, all all of that. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, now. Don't get me wrong. I love the Death Guard. So being a huge fan of that, I think it's really great. They're going to get a little time in the sun, and I think we can all expect that Mortarion is coming soon. Yes, I, I believe so. It was a dream of mine in a in a 40k game to have the the Forge World Mortarion uh, Typhon Ty, and the 40k Typhus uh, all on the same table representing different things. I'm now going to have to to up that <laughs> to now include a new a new Big Daddy. Oh yeah, I'll up the ante. I don't know what point value that game's going to be or whatever, but I'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. That'll come. That'll come. Don't worry. Yeah, about right. It. I think it'll, I think it'll be a, a fun adventure. Okay, so the universe not getting blown up and not in a way that's going to invalidate any of the previous backgrounds. And I think that's that's critical because if you are a fan of some faction, I would imagine even if it's I don't want to I don't want to say Sisters of Battle because I don't. You know, I don't know what's going to happen there. Let's say you're a fan of um, Inquisition. You're a fan of orcs. Uh, all that story, I would imagine all about Gasgol and everything about all those characters you might have a, a real appreciation for are going to carry forward into this new vein of 40K. It's true. So how can I get the rules? That's the next question. They, they said they're going to make it easier than ever, Horton. They are. They're going to make it easier than ever. And they're going to talking about providing the core rules for free. And you'll have options about how to get the full rule book. What does that mean? That means that Sigmar had four pages of rules. Now, do you think we're going to get a four-page download that, that everyone gets out? Or do you think that 40K is just too, too much? Well, you know, my opinion about this changed after I started playing Age of Sigmar. Uh, I don't think we're quite going to get only a four-page uh, rule book. Um, I think it will be larger than that. But there is a ton of – if you really dig into how Sigmar presents its rules and how 40K presents its rules, there is a tremendous amount that can be not cut out but put into different places. Um, and then that's kind of what Sigmar does. And in addition to this – Let's be honest, free access, access to the core rules is great for attracting new people. That eliminates another barrier to entry. You don't need to buy this $100, 300-page rulebook, right? You can just, oh, here are the rules for free, and oh, they're not that long. Maybe they're 20, 30 pages. Oh, that's not too bad. You know, maybe they're only 10. Maybe they're four. But that easy accessibility is very, good, very good for new players because I've lost a lot of people when I showed them the rule book. That's a really good point, Horton. Thank you for making it. They, the next thing they have is have you dumbed down 40K? And the answer, they say, is not at all. What they've done is reexamine every aspect of the game. This could easily just be a line, you know, to, to give us here. I, I don't believe it is because they follow this up with if you play, the, if you play today, the game is, is going to be still recognizably Warhammer 40K. And I think this point point is something that I'm so glad they addressed because this is I the, the I've talked to a lot of people about the potential 8th edition, and now it's confirmed that it's actually coming. Uh, and the uh, such a big concern from so many people has they said, oh, they're going to dumb it down. I'm not going to want to play it anymore. And they're not going to do that. They're going to put the complicated elements into and in, present it in different ways. And I mean, not to, you know, in a way, I kind of have to say this is essentially what Age of Sigmar did. It didn't make the game less complicated. It made the complication easier to understand by spreading out where it was. It compartmentalizes it, if you ask me, where it's, yes. it's you know, there's a complicated unit, but then all that unit's words are on the same page. Yeah, they're all right there. You know, you don't need to go memorize. Uh, it's like 20 or so pages of 
universal special rules when your guys just use two, right? And so it's it's a way to – they're not dumbing it down. They're making it more accessible, and you can make it as complicated as you want based off what you're playing and what combinations you're taking advantage of. So I merely, I, I'm not concerned about this at all. I'm very happy they addressed it, but they're not dumbing it down, and then that cannot be emphasized enough. 40K is still going to be super deep and tactical. It's just going to be different. I think that's fair to say. So then here's, here's the bitter pill to swallow right here. What happens to my codexes? They say that the, the, the current 40K codexes just aren't going to be compatible with the new edition, and the books are going off sale very soon. To me, this is not a bitter pill to swallow, and I have many reasons why. So some people I understand would be upset about this. Uh, I own, I think, 95% of the 7th edition codexes, okay, and the 6th edition ones, right? I can tell you, as someone who bought all these, I am not upset by this at all. One, I'm not upset by this at all because I've already thoroughly enjoyed those books. Love the lore, love the art, uh, and love the rules for the time. And a number of these, I'll go back through and read the lore. I've read the Decorn Demon Ken Codex plenty of times just for the background. But at the same time, if they didn't take this step, if the new edition was completely compatible with the current codexes, then the game is essentially chained to the old system such that it cannot change that much. So I see this and think, wow, they really are going to make some major changes to improve this game because they aren't chaining themselves to the past. And I'm very excited for what this means. That's really cool to say. And I also want to say that at least they're telling us right now, right? I mean, this is some X amount of time in advance of this change. And so it's really given the people the power to choose whether or not they they continue to purchase things or pick up something before it becomes uh, unavailable. Yes, it it really does. Uh, And I also think this statement, I'm very happy they're letting us know ahead of time. But at the same time, I think this, I think this is a clear sign that this edition this edition change will be happening very very soon because gw doesn't want to sit around for six months and not sell any codexes <laughs> yeah you're, right? prob- you're probably right on that and that's that's just fair to uh, speculate because on, they're sa- yeah i mean because they're saying they're going to stop selling them so why stop selling them for six months or something on you that know? warhammer 40,000.com site it's already fleshed out a little bit you can go into the setting and look at the factions and they've got uh, i guess a drop down labeling all the factions and if you right now if you go to the uh, chaos faction you will see sorry for the clicking around everyone chaos demons chaos space brains death guard and thousand sons oh Man, and so, you know they're only going to add to that list. Yeah, right. So if there was any, you know, and I know this has to be a work in progress because I was just clicking around to the the faction for the Imperium, and I I didn't see like Skitari in there yet. Uh, but you know, who knows? Maybe Cole Mechanicus gets rolled into Skit or Skitari gets rolled in to Cole Mechanicus, and we lose some of this kind of awkwardness with uh with uh, formations and uh, like combined arm detachments and that kind of stuff. I'm jumping around. I shouldn't. I got excited. That that was me. <laughs> Feeling like I, I, I just opened a present. You know, I found an Easter egg, uh, so I apologize. Well, yeah, there's a lot to explore on that site. I have not fully explored it either, but there's a lot there. And I, but I think what you said is very true. They're identifying the factions, right? And I think we're only going to get more content uh, in terms whether it's books or formations or publications or whatever about those factions because they want you to be able to play each one in its own way. Uh, the next thing up is what's in the new starter box. I, you know, I'm just going to go out and say most likely Imperial Marines and Death Guard. I think that's I think that's probably safe money. I think that's safe, especially considering how much James Workshop likes Marines and how and then and the recent Death Guard promotion. Oh man, I cannot wait to start painting Nurgle again. Oh yeah. Okay, are you getting rid of points? Uh, they, they say not at all. There will be a full point system for use in match play. This is exactly like the General's Handbook, and it that revitalized that game. I mean, like just l- like paddles, to, like defib paddles to the heart. I mean, that is what happened to that game. Adepticon last year had thirty something, forty players. This year, over a hundred in the Age of Sigmar tournament. Oh yeah, it, it's dramatic, and I think for people who are potentially scared by this. You really need to try to understand what this book did and what this kind of system allows you to do, okay? They're essentially saying here the points are going to be in the match play section of the rulebook, okay? So that basically means they're talking about a system 
where when they can update the points, which they talk about doing and we'll talk about later, they only have to update one book and it will impact the entire game immediately. So that is an ex- that is a much, much easier system to manage if you when you do updates because they we want updates. Updates are good. Um, and it also compartmentalizes where the points for everything will be. You don't have to have 20 codexes to have all the points. You need one book that has the match play rules. And I I love it. The ugly side of things, you know, where points are hidden in other people's codexes, you never know, unless you're familiar with that particular codex, if someone's at 2,001 points. You know, if they if they really messed up and they came with fifteen hundred points to an eighteen fifty tournament, you don't know. You, there's no way for you to even understand that in the competitive side. Having it all right there for everyone to digest has some very much hidden benefits outside of what we just talked about. Oh yeah, yeah. You you don't have to guess and you don't have to have every book. It's just it's right there in your core book. Yeah, and they made, those, they made those books pretty easy to get a hold of. I think the General's Handbook was 25 bucks. Now, that's no indicator of future cost, but I'm just saying that was a, a big push to get that out to people. Oh, oh yeah. And I obviously, it's just speculation, but I would be surprised if it was different. So th- there's three ways to play. We've covered that on previous shows. I won't eat up time right now. Uh, but then the next big question is, why should I just not stick with the current 40K? And, the, and they come out and say, because we've listened to you. Like all every – they've opened up these channels, the floodgates of being able to communicate with Games Workshop. Th- by their words here – now what this actually means, we'll see. But I'm, I'm very hopeful is that they have taken this feedback from all these sources – uh, and tried to distill it down into something that is ultimately what we've asked for. And I, I'm so happy they addressed this question because I have talked to people who have kind of said, who have said, oh, if they'd release eighth, I'm just going to play seventh, right? And GW could have said, well, it's the most current edition, and that's the edition we're going to support. You should play it. But they didn't. They said, no, well, look, we this is for y'all. Y'all wanted, we y'all gave us feedback. You know, you gave us input on these questions we asked for, and we think this version is the best. We think it's more fun, and that's why you should play it. And I think that's a great response. Yeah, agreed. Uh, and then it's, it goes on to ask, you know, hey, I haven't played 40K in a while, and welcome back, is what they say. Uh, this is going to be easier to learn and quicker to play, and that is just like music to my ears. Yes, I can't tell you how important that is, how good of a thing that is, right? Easier to learn and quicker to play does not mean dumbed down, okay? It means more approachable. Yeah, chess you, uh, is easy to learn and quick to play. Yeah, but there's infinite depth, right? Yeah. Infinite. And that's a great example. Uh, not that 40K is going to turn into chess, but I've try, I've introduced this game, or at least tried to introduce this game to a lot of people, and the, that initial investment of time with, the compl- with how hard it is to initially learn loses a lot of people. So I think this is a great thing to do. Yeah, I mean this with a focus on that, it makes I mean I've got I've got friends who are amazing game players. We play board games and it's some of the the most tactical just uh, I mean, rewarding gameplay experiences when you win, you you feel like you've earned it against these folks, uh, but they can't get into 40k because of like either the sheer time that a game takes or some of the complexity and or I shouldn't say complexity, the exhaustive nature of explaining to someone how to build a competitive 40k list right now. Yes. Uh, 100% agree. And so if we can get to the point of getting those types of people in, that's going to make my game, my games even more exciting. It's going to open it up to a different sect of people. And then at the same time, you got people that just want to roll some dice with cool looking figures. And maybe we get those folks too. Yeah. And, and you know, they're, and they're talking about the same game being faster to play. Right. And that's great because it, just since I've started playing at the end of fourth, the game has gotten longer and longer to play. Uh, I'm still having a ton of fun, but I yeah. think if there is a way to have a system, we can have all the cool stuff happen, but get it done in two hours. I'm all for it. Yeah, we're the fanatics. We're going to play, you know, we love, and we're not just, we don't just, uh, we don't just love winning. We also love all the stories, you know, it's a, it's a total package, but we're going to, we're, we'll play this edition even if nothing changed. I think you and I, or, but there's a lot of people out there that don't feel the same way. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm hooked. I mean, I, I, I'm all into this, but you know, I, I want to try to tell people that I think that the changes they're talking about are very positive. 
Uh, and so no need to, no need to worry. No need to set anything on fire. <laughs> yeah, you're right. No, it is way too soon to, uh, to be burning armies. That's, that's for sure. And you shouldn't. I mean, I think that I, I really do have a, have faith that everything will be supported in some capacity. I mean, I, I know that there are things, if you, anytime that you're trying to, to win something and where efficiency is, is your only motivator, uh, that's going to change. I mean, that's going to change over time and it, and it should. Uh, but if you are, you know, playing to have casually or to have fun, then no one has anything to worry about. And those competitive folks, you, you know, you're just going to suck it up and deal with it anyway. So don't complain about it. Let's just, let's just see what happens. This is going to be a fun ride. Well, and that's why I think the three ways to play is such a a genius play by GW. You know, they're saying you can play however you – we understand there are different ways to play this game. We're supporting and providing support for each one, right? And then for for you competitive guys, I mean they acknowledge that, hey, we're also going to update the rules annually, I mean the the points values. That's that's an un, that's like a dream come true for every competitive player. Yeah, for, for real, I, I completely agree with you. Uh, so okay, th- there's a few more questions here. Uh, they but the, some of them are when can we when can I get it? Um, really soon is what they say. No time, no time t- table on that right now. And then uh, what do I do now? <laughs> What are, you, what are you doing right now, Orton, in, in expectation? Uh, so I'm finally building my stockpiles of Burning of Prospero and Betrayal at Kalf. Uh, that's kind of where I am uh, in a holding pattern, building those things that have st- piled up in the closet. So good, lots of hobby, lots, of, mainly because I'm super busy, but lots of hobby right now. Yeah, that's what I've been uh, – I've been building Age of Sigmar stuff and painting Age of Sigmar stuff. I have about a thousand points of Sylvaneth done right now, and I'll be uh, doing a, a little bit more of that in expectation of being able to play Sigmar at Warhammer World. I'm pretty excited about that. That sounds great. I've been doing a handful of Age of Sigmar myself, uh, and it's got me very excited for the changes to come. I think so. But for 40k, uh, I'm doing the same thing I always have. I've been, I've been building and painting units that I like the look of or that I think are going to give me some type of competitive advantage. Uh, but that's hard to do right now, so I'm going to fall back on uh, every when i get some free hobby time i typically build a uh, i don't vanity unit is too like too strong of a word i build a unit that in my mind looks awesome uh and just and i just want to own like i've uh, i talk a lot about some blood angel stern guard that i've that i've built and put together i, I may i may do a, a couple of uh blood angel units that I, that i want to flesh out like i don't have uh, a death company dreadnought i want to make a real cast for the dam I have something that I've used as a proxy before, but I actually want to make a really tight looking cast for the dam. And I think I will do that during this down period. Do it. Let those, let that hobby energy go. All right, man. Well, Horton, thank you so much for joining me for this, this quick spot. Is there anything you else you want to imply to folks and part to folks, maybe make a plea to some people that may be on the fence? I would just I- express to people that this is at a very exciting time. We should just be well, on the wait for uh, more news as GW puts out, but 40K is only getting better. Get excited. Couldn't have said it better. Horton, thanks a lot for joining me this morning. No, thanks for having me. I know We know we're going to get more information coming on this stuff. They even go on to say they're going to have daily articles on the Warhammer community site like they do, but I'm, I'm sure as we move closer to this release, it's going to be a lot more uh, new 40k centric. So if you don't already subscribe or have it set up to check regularly the Warhammer community page, you're going to want to do that. See you guys. 